We're still joined by political sketch writer from The Times, Quentin Letts, by observer writer Sonia Soda, and also the Reverend Steve Chalk has joined us. He runs a number of schools and academies across the country. Steve, it's great to have you in the studio. We've spoken to you a lot over the last couple of years down the line, but to have you here today uh, in the studio is fantastic, not least because as the sort of uh, leader of a number of, of schools and academies across the country, you will have first-hand experience and understanding mm. of how your academies teachers are helping the pupils understand what's going on in Ukraine at the moment. What's been their approach? How are they trying to inform the pupils so they understand what's going on but not elevate the anxiety, which undoubtedly yeah. can come from seeing the pictures that we're seeing? Well, I think, Ben, the big thing is to recognise that this worries children. Of course they're anxious about this. They hear the news, they see the pictures in the newspapers, etc., etc. They, uh, they know that there's something terrible going on. They know that there's a war. And, of course, in our schools, we've got 32,000 children in our schools. We've got Russian children. We've got Ukrainian children. We've got children who've got families in these countries, children who've got families that are working in these countries. So you have to deal with it. A school's got to be a safe place. Mm. And to be safe, it means you've got to provide somewhere where young people can talk and they can express their fears and their worries. And, and if they're upset, they're upset. So the wonderful thing about teachers across this country is they're caring people, aren't they? And they create space for kids to talk. What we're doing, actually, on top of all of that, tomorrow, uh, we're doing a virtual vigil across all our schools, and Oasis works in other places in the world. So the whole worldwide Oasis community, for 10 minutes, is going to be online together to pause, to reflect, mm. but also kids want to take action and do something. And so uh, they're all raising sponsorship. In fact, we raised more than £10,000 ahead of them actually doing anything tomorrow morning, and the children have decided we're going to send all of this money mm. to... Um, Ukrainian charities, registered charities, working in Ukraine and in Poland and Hungary and etc., uh, etc., et for bedding, for medical services, for food. Isn't that incredible that kids can think about this at that level and do? Yeah, it, it is. I mean, schools can be a place, as you say, to discuss these issues. Quentin, schools can also be a place where propaganda is seeded, of course, because yeah. Russia's Ministry of Education has said school children there will be forced to watch a broadcast today about the necessity of a liberation mission in Ukraine. I mean, the Russians get a completely different picture to the one that we get, don't they? They do, but the truth will out in the end. It always does in the end, you know. Um, but it's a question of uh, how long that takes. And the, the impact on children of, um, of warfare is why, when I was uh, young, I grew up at a time when, when in, in the 60s when nuclear warfare was always around, and I had a recurring nightmare. I can still remember it, uh, exactly the images mm. of my recurring nightmare when I was about age six of a cafe, being sitting in a cafe and being blown up by an atomic bomb. And these things do seep quite deeply into mm. uh, children's consciousness. Mm. Steve, I wonder, that when we heard that Putin had put nuclear weapons on high alert, mm. I can imagine a huge number of children... <gasps> In were distressed by that. I mean, I couldn't sleep because of yeah. that. Incredible. So you, as Quinton says, you imagine the impact of that piece of news on a seven-year-old child. It's absolute death. It's totally traumatising, which is why, you know, I am utterly confident in school teachers across this mm -hmm. country. They know how to create a space where young people can talk. You know, they always say, trauma that you don't deal with continues to deal with you. It will give you nightmares so, and worse. So the opportunity to, to talk and for a teacher to coax this out of kids. And for us, this vigil is a way of taking action as yeah. well. Mm. So you get it out of you and you do something you, positive. Yeah, you Being become engaged yeah, like, with it, like rather than, making a difference. Yeah, yeah. rather than bury it. Uh, Sonia, I mean, Quentin, Quentin's saying that, that the truth will out in the end for the Ukrainians. That can't happen soon enough. I wonder whether there's sort of a, a sense of, of how the, the, the Western press can help get that story into Russia so that truth can come out sooner. 
Yeah, so, I mean, obviously there were real challenges around the measures that Putin has taken to sort of shut off independent media. But I think what's interesting is if you look at what's happening in Russia, by all accounts, is that there is a bit of a generational split in terms of attitudes to what's happening. And that's because even in a country like Russia, you can't completely close off information sources. So if you've got access to the internet, there are always ways that you can find to sort of get a window on what's happening in the outside world. And people think that that's one of the reasons why we are seeing this generational split. So I, I, I think it's just about continuing to sort of, you know, tell the news, put it online. And I do think that, that, that enterprising Russians particularly Russians who are online, they will find a way to get the news. And I think, you know, that's why... That, that's one of the things that Putin has misjudged yeah. so much. There's so much that he's misjudged. But one is actually in this very modern information age, yeah. you can't completely shut off a nation yeah. of people to the reality of what's going on. Well, one of the ways, of course, of getting information out is having very brave war correspondents yeah. there Absolutely. on the ground, um, a, a number of them staying. One of them we will be speaking to this morning, our global news uh, editor, security editor, Rohit Katru, after uh, 8 o'clock.